So in this segment, we're going to be talking about Liz Truss was warned of blows to the food sector under the Australia and New Zealand trade deals. So data obtained by Politico shows the economic toll on farmers known before the post-Brexit trade uh, talks began. And obviously, she would have known because they would have done impact assessment reforms, uh, in impact assessment reports. So what that means is they would look at the exact impact um, getting rid of tariffs and quotas would have on the UK for you know agri-foods effectively. So she she knew she knew about this, and the fact that she's in a rural constituency kind of worries me um, a lot because surely the farmers in her constituency and even the processors in her constituency should be you know knocking on her you know parliamentary her you know her constituency office and saying what the hell Liz, but yeah, Conservative leadership hopeful Liz Truss was given detailed warnings by her own officials in 2020 that post Brexit trade deals of with Australia and New Zealand would shrink the country's farming and food sectors newly obtained government figures uh, reveal. Data from the UK's Trade Department shows the relative losses and gains expected for each part of the economy before trust, um, before she forged ahead with packs that are proven highly controversial with farmers. And the farmers are not happy about this. Um, I mean, that bat has constantly talked about the fact that, you know, I think the Australia deal is the worst one because they use more pesticides and have much lower food standards than us. Um, she's been more vocal about this, talking about the impact the Australian um, exports will have on the um, the UK um, kind of agri-food um, industry. Um, New Zealand's food standards are relatively high. They have equivalency with the EU, which means that they're doing fairly well. Um, this disclosure has already sparked anger from the UK's farming lobby, which has long argued the deals held up as a key prize of, of Britain's freedom will hit its members hardest, while campaigners argue it shows tighter scrutiny of those deals is needed. And you know, Parliament hasn't even got access to these um, to these reports yet. It was gotten by a Freedom of Information um, request lodged by um, Emily Thornbury. It, she, uh, they say it's simply frustrating this minute batters it's simply frustrating that the government ploughed on in its negotiations while um, while as these own government department reports show ministers knew that Britain's agriculture was likely to be the most impacted sector and it's obvious that you know New Zealand and Australia are agri-food powerhouses so they're, they're, they're designed you know their farms are designed for massive exports and they're looking for an alternative to China and for some reason they picked the UK as that alternative despite geography being in the way but it gives them more kind of leverage in negotiations with China because they can say, look, you don't want to buy our stuff, you want to play, you want to, you don't want to play ball here. Fine, we're going to find another export market, and the UK is one of those. This puts at risk hundreds of millions of pounds and thousands of jobs, said Minette Batters, president of the lobby group, the National Farmers Union, and she needs to go on a media tour here and she needs to talk about this constantly, all the time. The uh, Trade Department says. It does not sign trade deals which do not work for the UK producers and businesses, and they can argue it adds 0.02% to the um, to the country's GDP, which is great. But that's best case scenario. the The cost it will have to these sectors it's going to be a disaster. The data was obtained through a Freedom of Information Act lodged by former Sh um, Trade Secretary Shadow Trade Secretary Emily Thornbury, and shared exclusively with Politico. Why she shared it exclusively with Politico, I have no idea. But the fact is, you know. I don't know why she's been moved on either. I think she's been moved up, promoted, potentially Emily Thornbury. But the fact is, you know, freedom of information quest, request can work. Um, the government can kind of run the clock on it, but they do work. And the simple fact is she wouldn't have got it through Parliament because Parliament would have voted down any request to be shown the impact assessment reports because they're a bunch of idiots. So the report shows that officials advised trust an Australia deal would spark a 3.44% shift in employment away from the semi-processed food sector over 15 years. Now, I'm assuming the semi-processed food sectors are foods that are like, you know, like maybe cold cuts or, you know, cuts of beef that have been uh, partially processed but still need to be cooked, making it the hardest hit part of the UK economy in employment terms. Uh, at the same time, the department projected a 0.46% drop in the value of that sector to the UK economy on the Australia deal. And you could say these are small figures here, but ultimately they will have a large impact on the sector. Um, and let's not forget, once people kind of, uh, if Australian and New Zealand beef and you know agri-food products are cheaper than our own, it will cause a more longer term problem. For the New Zealand Pact, Trust was warned to expect a 2.69% shift in employment away from the semi-processed food to other sectors. And the simple fact is, the only countries that will benefit from this are New Zealand and Australia. They will get more employment into these sectors. Um, the consumer can benefit if these are cheaper, but if these are lower standard goods, that's not going to be great. And also the environment suffers because of you know geography. 
and a, it will also result in a 2.97% hit to its economic value. So you can see overall it's going to have a massive impact. Um, both deals will have a massive impact on the economy, on these industries. Agriculture, forestry and fishing were also set to take a hit. The analysis showed 0.69% long-term shift in jobs away from agriculture, forestry and fishing under the Australia, impact, um, Australia Pact and also the fact that the trade deals potentially, potentially violate our deforestation pledges as well and a 0.16% dip to the sector's value over the same span. So you can see multiple industries being hit here. Not massive amounts, you're not talking 4 and 5%, but still significant amounts. The projection was made under the department's scenario 2, an outcome that most closely resembles the final deals struck with each nation. So what you can tell is the fact that the, the government have no intention of actually helping the industries, and these are industries that are predominantly within their constituency. So if you are in the agriculture industry or the processing industry, the Tories don't care about you. You know, the deals would hit British agriculture and food production the most has been an open secret in government in a meeting attended by the Department for International Trade, the Treasury and the Department for the Environment, DEFRA. Officials um, said it was cl made clear that trade deals would prioritise more profitable sectors of Britain's economy. So, you know, if you don't make the economy that much money, you're on the scrap heap effectively. That's how these trade deals are going to be spun. So if you're in an industry where you don't make a ton of money for the economy, the government will happily throw you away happily throw you away and I don't know what industries are going to benefit from the uh, UK Australia deal or the UK New Zealand deal I'll be honest with you they said that adding such comments appeared to be aimed at DEFRA officials in the room so it's clear that they're happy to throw DEFRA under the bus they're happy to throw farmers under the bus a department for international trade spokesperson said in a statement our trade deals with Australia and New Zealand include robust safeguards to protect our agricultural sector they don't because they get rid of all quotas and tariffs over 15 years while also unlocking billions of pounds of bilateral trade, paving our way to join the nine trillion dollar, nine trillion pound combined GDP Trans-Pacific Partnership. But you know, just because we have access to the Trans-Pacific Partnership doesn't mean that we're going to increase our trade dramatically. Also, the fact that we have to pay by um, by their rules, which is something we don't really like doing, because apparently we're sovereign, so we're going to play by another country's, another institution's rules. That's not going to happen. Um, and the simple fact is New Zealand can veto our ascension. Any country can veto our ascension to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Even um, the Canadians have talked about the fact that the UK need to tra change our rules on hormone beef um, because they want to export that stuff to us. And they're going to look for concessions elsewhere if we don't give them it. So the argument that we're going to join the Trans-Pacific Partnership is a nonsense. Labour, sh Labour Shadow Environment Secretary... Uh, Jim McMahon told Politico ministers have been warned that these trade deals are likely to damage our farming communities and now it looks like the government knew all along that it was risking thousands of jobs and huge value to the British economy and let's not forget that you know I thought Britain's pride was meant to be you know our agriculture sector you know that's what people constantly bang on about but yet you know we don't care about them and we're happy to throw them under the bus um, in order to get trade deals which add almost nothing to our economy it's so wild. Um, but anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This is not something that we didn't know, but the fact is Liz Trust knew the whole time, which makes sense. But also the fact that the Department of International Trades um, kind of methods of getting trade deals are essentially throw weaker parts of the economy under the bus in order to help the slightly stronger bits. And I do wonder that are those stronger parts the ones that donate to the Tory party? Because again, if you if you work in the agriculture sector, if you work in the processing sector, surely you've got to realise by now the Tory government do not care about you. But anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.